The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour on this 13th day of February. Dow's up 119 at 20,388. S&P is up almost 10 at 2325. And that's again, the Dow is stronger than the S&P. Uh, now, this is going to be very interesting because you've got the comp index up 28 and at uh, 5760. We got everything all lined up. The IWM is up. Uh, the VIX is uh, actually up 44 cents at 11.29. Is it foreseeing something? Well, we'll see soon enough. The E mini right now is a nine, up 9.50 at 23.22. Leg D daily. The E mini is up 9.50 at 23.21. Leg D weekly. The uh, E-mini is up 925 at 23.22. Leg D in the 120-minute chart, also chapter wave 5, based on the techniques that I've developed. Um, but here's the real issue. Move it away. I'm going to go to, just for the moment, the continuous contract, because that shows you. Uh, yes. Hey, what happened? I didn't hope I didn't mess anything up yet. There it goes. Because within the context of I'm trying to get that right. Uh oh. Oh, there it is. Okay. Within the context of the patterns that we look at, when we're looking at, I'm going to just have to change this. I seem to have a little problem. I'm going to go to the Dow. The Dow is in leg D daily, gone to 20,000. 390s. This is really, uh, this is an incredible move to the upside. What I'd say to my subscribers over the weekend, over the weekend, starting Saturday, I like to start getting out my Monday charts, and then we can have time to, uh, you know, people might uh, question, ask us something about it and all. What I had said is the stochastic is at, it was at about 87%, now it's at 89%. The MACD had crossed positive. I showed, I circled it, say, you know, this is something that I cannot ignore. You remember on Friday, I, I discussed it in terms of the IWM, the Russell 2000. I said, something's up here. The Russell 2000 is showing really good strength. Is it going to be that the Russell has this first quarter strength that sometimes happens in the small caps? I'm not sure. But all I can say is that at this particular point, it looked to me like the Russell could break out and take out the previous high, peak C1, then C2 lower, C3 lower, C4 lower. But that C4 was also the start of perhaps an A, B inside buy signal. I would suggest to you that this is now in a buy mode, that I could call this a D, but after so many C1, C2, C3, I think I'm going to just stay with the C. And I believe there should be some kind of a pullback, and then there should be a nominal new high to a D, because what you've got now is you you can't go to H in the Chapman wave. This has to be a brand new leg C in the weekly chart. Now, that's the thing that I said over the weekend. The reason why we can't go short, unless the Dow drops sharply uh, in, at the opening, I don't want to be short. <clears throat> we can have short positions, but not in the indices. Why? Let me show you something very interesting in the Chapman wave methodology. Remember, the idea is to get you to a leg D, and then a peak D, four higher peaks. What does that mean? Well, it's a real simple concept. If I just, I, I did some cleaning up and some changes. I hate cleaning up. I can never find anything after I cleaned up. Anyway, I had to do it. In the Chapman methodology, I try to identify the most obvious lowest low bar and then merely count each successively higher peak. Four peaks higher, I label them alphabetically, uppercase A, B, C, D on the way up. It can go to E, F, and G, but it's at D that other things can happen. Why? Because at D, you can get a deeper pullback. At D, you can get a long sideways movement. At D, you can immediately go to another leg within three bars, and that's what I call a recycle or an instant restart. And you can have a brand new, I mean, it's a fantastic technique because if it works, it can take you to a brand new peak A, 
E slash A, F slash B, G slash C, and then another D. So it can give you a whole new series of highs that will impact your next longer time frame. Okay, with that said, the diamonds, the Dow, the spider, Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, I can't give it anything else. It is in a leg C. If it just squeaked at 199.83, the week of the 16th of December, if it just squeaked instead of going to 199.83, it went to 199.84, we'd be home and dry. Now, I've developed something over the years that I call phantom peaks. You can only use them very rarely, and you have to almost have a court case to, 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 to be able to get the, 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 uh, the confirmation. You've got to go through a number of hoops. And in this case, they double top by missing, missing by one penny says to me, you know what, I'm not going to rely as much on the diamonds, but I am going to rely on the IWM weekly, which is now only in C. And that's saying to me, we could have a, a pretty quick uh, downside snap at any point. Of course, we've just gone up 100 points. We just went up 100 points the other day. We, I mean, well, what's the quick snap to the downside or a plunge to the downside? 136.05 is the nine period moving average in the IWM, in the Dow, INDU. In the Dow, you've got, um, there we go, 19,978. So just under 20,300 points, which is called a, um, 400 points. A 400 point decline. Um, it'll feel bad, but we've just had a 400 point rally. So this is a very interesting period. Why? My contention has been for a while that if the if the public starts to hear Dow 20,000, Dow 20,000, Dow 20,000, they're just going to turn and say, what happened to the teens? I mean, 20,000? And I haven't got fully invested. So we are starting to add more and more to the long side. But simultaneously, I'm not prepared to ignore the downside. So I'd rather do it with stocks at this particular point. And looking at we, uh, sectors that have had fantastic moves that are pre probably in for a little bit of a, a pullback, I, uh, I've identified one at least. So here we are. Uh, let's go to gold before we run out of time here. Gold is down. Why am I having a little trouble getting these uh, indices? Am I online still? Yep, I am. Hmm, that's unusual. Um, control R. Okay, well, I can't see it here, but I'm going to get it from, from the uh, other medium. And here we go. So gold is down 11 at 12.24. The uh, silver is down 9 cents at 17.84. Uh, High-grade copper is up 195, 278. Copper's had a fabulous move to the downside, uh, to the upside. Crude oil is to the downside, down a dollar at 52.87. Bonds are down 9, uh, 30 seconds at 124.15. And the dollar is if i can just move this over to the side the dollar should be up and the dollar is up 17 at 100.97 who got all that out the way we'll be back and i'll try to figure out what's going on with my data which usually is pretty darn good so i'm going to be back in a moment dow's up 111 sb is up eight and a half basil chapman tiger technicians hour love to take your calls Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how Everbank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? Everbank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Out. And this is really fascinating. So I had a question about uh, JP Morgan. What was the question? Uh, JP Morgan, uh, 52 week high, BKX. Yep, yep. This is all very good. Chapman Wave. Leg D. In JP Morgan trading at 88.34, up a dollar 34. Leg D in the weekly, but leg B. I, there's no other way I can count it. I'm counting leg B in the monthly. That is really bullish. Look at that move. Um, so where's the support? 86.79. It's at 88.39, and uh, between 86 and a half and 85 and a half. That should be a cushion if there's any sudden downturn. But right now, it looks really good. If I had to draw trend lines in it, let me see. I was going to do that uh, over the weekend. I just never had a chance to get to it. Um, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to rush through it now. Uh, maybe I'll do it uh, this evening or some sometime, or maybe tomorrow. I mean, there's a lot to get through right now. But the trend line essentially says going into the 88. And, 80 to the 89.50s is really key. If it starts to trade in the 89s, that's going to be very positive. If it stalls and starts pulling back, be a little careful. BKX, it's almost the same thing the BKX right now is trading at. I just hit that, right? There it is. BKX is waiting for symbol 94.35, up $1.21. And this is A, B, A, B. This is only C. Yeah. This is still very positive. And what about the weekly? The weekly says it's either a brand new B or it's an F. So it's an F slash B. At this point, the, the technicals are still very good. I don't want to make any decision other than to say it's looking very good. I'll have to make a decision if at 94.35 it drops by Thursday, it's down below 92. Then I'm going to say, uh oh, here's a problem. But at this particular point, nice move up, still leg B in the monthly. Wow. I can't believe that. Okay, now we're going to go to Bob's question about VZ, Verizon. Let me just have a look at this. Down at 48.33, there 43. It made it a high of 48, a 54.83 back on January the 5th, peak D. That was an A in the counter trend rally because the peak G was a pretty serious top that was made back in July of 2064. In the, in the high 56, 57 area, and um, dropped down to 46, and now it's trading at 48, after spiking to 55, um, 50, 54, 83. So this is chop, chop, chop. I, I, 
I, let me have a look at telephone. This is the one that I've had my eye on. I've said that we're going to hold off. I want you to get buy it back as a, we had a really, really good gain. A buy it back as a dividend stock. Yeah, I'm wondering, is it, is it my internet? Because the snow, it looks so beautiful. Oh, it was tough to, uh, to get cleaned up. But I have to tell you, it looks, this is where the snow on the trees, it looks like one of those pictures you see for a Christmas card or something like that. Uh, just beautiful. Um, it'll be brown and melt <laughs> soon. All right, I'm waiting for telephone. Telephone doesn't want to give me anything. Wait, I can see what the price is. Telephone right now is, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Yeah, 40.91 um, down down 47 cents why is this happening maybe maybe it is the internet that's a little slow today or maybe now i wonder if it's volume you know we haven't had some of you will never know this but there was a period where we were trading and the ticker tape they would announce is 10 minutes behind we knew it was 10 minutes behind but it would be 10 minutes behind sometimes it was more sometimes it was more than like like 20 minutes and in big crash periods it could be even an hour in October, October 19th, 1987, uh, it, it was almost uh, the whole day you couldn't get a, a decent quote. So I'm just trying to stall for time here while telephone comes up. All right. <clears throat> did I have Verizon? Yep, I did. So let's see if I can get Verizon back here. Yeah. Oh, I should have stayed with that while I had it. While I had it. All right. <clears throat> what we were looking at is that snow freezing the lines. I guess so. <laughs> What can I say? It's uh, pretty cold. Uh, what I was looking at was that telephone looked to me as a better dividend stock than Verizon. Now, I want to look at the chart. I don't want to just give that to you as a, as a flat statement when I'm not looking at Come on. I'll be very nice to you. Give me a Okay. Control R and it's still not coming up. All right. Well, that's what I wanted to say. So, um, Bob, Verizon, dreaded H. Yes, I don't like the action of Verizon. ATT is breaking down. I, I wanted it as a, a dividend stock. I'm not sure they're breaking down. It was not holding as well as it should. It made that H pattern. There it goes. So Verizon, you see this Verizon is sitting on the, what I'm going to say to you as a dividend stock, I don't know if I'm prepared to consider it these days as a dividend stock anymore because the competition for pricing is starting to get pretty intense. Um, and I, let me tell you, if you look at your internet bulls and you look at all the bulls from the from your Verizons, AT&Ts and whatever, wow. They are really high. They keep going up. They keep, they're not going down. So I think there's going to be competition to try to push them a little lower. So I would say to you, out of the two, I'm still not getting – why is that? That's very unusual. Oh, and even here it's loading. Oh, there it is. Oh, there is, but there's a problem. It says loading. That means that there, there was a problem with the connection. Let me have a look over here on my, my modem, etc. Yeah, yeah, flashing away. All right, so I don't want to mess around you in the middle of the show. There is a problem. We're going to get the data back in a moment. And now this is what I wanted to look at. You see this 200 period exponential moving average right here, the, the orange line in the weekly chart. It's it's trying to find support there a lot. Look, it did this earlier on, uh, way back in the beginning of last year. Look, it went under it. Let me show you the weekly chart. This is a very good example of how 200 period moving average are so important. You don't need them when you don't need them. When you need them, they are like beacons of light. And here it is. Support, support, support. Bam. Resistance, resistance, resistance. Boom. Support, support. Resistance. Boom. It's back to support. So all I can say to you is be very careful because... I think it's holding okay, but okay isn't good enough. So if it's just a question of what are we looking at, we're looking at lower highs and not yet lower lows. But if Verizon takes out 44, now I can't even get the price. This low right here, the low of 46, somewhere around 40. If it takes out 40, closes under 46, this is just not good at all. And that's going to impact the monthly as well. So I'd be a little hesitant. I don't think you're missing out if I say to you, don't do any. If you wanted to buy it, don't do anything yet. Give it just a little bit longer, and then we can treat it as a dividend stock. I'm going to try one more time to get telephone. Here it goes.
on the phone. There it is. I'm waiting for Dale. There it is. You see, Dalphone has gone to a peak E, pulled back quite sharply, is making slightly lower lows and lower highs, but it's still nicely above. Look, look, this is a high level consolidation so far. I'm going to say on both of them, I don't like the action. I would, I would give up some upside points rather than have, you remember we used to have wonderful uh, goofy golfer passed away um, it's like a couple of months ago used to be in the den he used to say don't catch a falling knife but if you do i'll sell you the metal gloves and this is the case i don't want if if telephone starts to break that 40.93 down 45 cents if it takes out the low right there 40.24 on the 10th of january be really careful. So I'm I'm a little afraid of these as dividend stocks. So I hope that helps you. But in terms of the waveform, yes, I think you're correct. Identifying the Chapman wave, dreaded H is about to uh, unfold. Uh, Sarah wants to look at CAT and XLI and the wave count and copper. We'll be back. Copper is looking fantastic. HG, look at that. Oh, I can't get it because it takes time. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We'll get to high-grade copper, but while everything's working on the Internet, at this particular point, I've got... Uh, oh, imagine. I, just to thank goodness I wasn't trading right now. I wonder if they were... No, that one seems to be working very nicely. Separate. Okay. Um... So Caterpillar um, made a high just the other day at uh, 20 on the 27th of January at 99.46. Turns around and comes back down six points. Well, not a big deal, but in Caterpillar's case, it doesn't often do that. It's been on a tear to the upside. And it goes to 92.11 on the 8th of February. And then it has one, gap up two, gap up three, three bars 
spectacular bars, and it looks like it wants to go to that missing D right there in the weekly chart. And that says it's got to go above 49.46. Uh, 49, that starts leg D. I think it'll do it. That'll be leg B extension in the monthly chart. So this is really, I guess they had spoken about this as uh, the Trump stocks, and this probably is in that category, um, looking good. So, uh, so yeah, looking very good. Key support is at 95.38. It's at 98.86 right now. This is another question. I thought, good. So the XLI, did I actually do that on the weekend? I don't think I did. Oh, no. Yep, there it is. XLR leg D. That's what I wanted to see. Leg D in the daily, above resistance. Uh, another gap up. These gaps are amazing. This is more than short covering. Leg, now this is, oh, that's right. Leg C in the weekly. And that's another reason why I think that we do pull back some. And maybe we go all the way into fe end of February before we have a March, a real March sell-off marching downwards. I, that's the way it looks right now because of the strength that I'm looking at. Okay, so XLI, which is the S&P Industrial Spider ETF. This is different to the Dow. It's a different makeup, acting beautifully. Of course, it has Caterpillar, and that's, that's, that's part of it. Uh, it doesn't have Deer. I can't remember if it has Deer. What is Deer? Oh, I just hit that as if I had internet connection working beautifully. Uh, yep, there it is. So this is A, B, C, and this is leg D. All right, so that gets altered there because that turns out to be a, a low of significance. And that becomes A, B, C, and there's your D. And the stochastic and MACD are just breaking out now. But the unbalanced volume is suggest to be careful beginning to a, an area where uh, it's getting uh, on the unbalanced volume, it's getting overbought. Now, this is the question. Is this leg C? Yeah, G slash C in the weekly chart. All I can say is acting fantastically, and Deer broke its up uh, Chapman wave, up uh, upside, inside track repellent zone. Just went right through it as if to say, "Hey, um, what's the problem here?" Just right through it, Deer up a dollar nineteen at one hundred eleven point forty three. Um, just shorter term, I think we're getting somewhat overbought. It's easy to say. Who couldn't say that we're getting overbought? Um, but does that mean we're going to turn down sharply? At this particular point, the MACD is turning up. That's good. It's the stochastic that is 93%. And that, to me, says, hey, in the 93% is really good action. When it drops back to 87%, you've got to start being careful. Here's a good question. Uh, Paul wants to know, market, he says. The total capitalization of the whole market now equal the debt in the country. Is this a winning formula? <clears throat> so, oh man, I did this big cleanup over the weekend, <laughs> not voluntarily, <laughs> but it was a request. Can you can you get things organized? So I got my I, I was working all weekend on both of them on stock charts and I could sneak in and do them and cleaning up my office and every, everywhere I could. Um, and I found stuff from way back. I mean, I found things, quotes that I'd had that were sent that were in barons and all sorts of things like that. And I looked at history. I was going to do it this morning, but I'm just a little too disorganized right now to be able to. I, this, this is getting nice and cleaned up in my office, but I don't want to bring everything back in here. But I have papers with um, going back, way back. Plus, I have those fish, uh, microfish, um, tons of microfish from this, when you go to the folks don't know about it anymore, but you had to go to the library to get from the, from the 1920s or earlier. You had to get these um, special, like a like a, a Xerox copy or a, it was a special photo photographic way of, of making a, an image and then you could print it out. And it was usually with the black background, so it was not very e cheap to copy and uh, all that. I've got tons of those. And I wonder if I got one right here. No, I don't. And uh, I was rereading it, and all about the twenties and etc. And so many things are paralleling the twenties, except I have to put into this whole package. Have we begun in this coda formation? Have we? We are actually in the second half of the coda. Can it extend for four years, or is this going to all wrap up? with a really serious, not a crash per se, but a really serious decline starting later in the year. My leaning is that, that that's what we're look, probably looking at. But so, Paul, I don't think you've got, keep it in mind, it's a really good question. 
But the charts are the charts, and the market's the market. And I'm, I said yesterday, you know what? Shove that aside. Um, for those of you who were fortunate enough uh, six, seven years ago or five years ago to be able to put money away, say, for uh, um, college, for kids, and you're not allowed to touch it, hey, that's been the best thing. You're not allowed to touch it. Big deal. So, you, I mean, that's, you know, one trade, and it's still doing very well. Um, smaller trades can do nicely, but it's a lot more work. So all I can say is, uh, Paul, I'm going to suggest to you, you've got a good question. The market's going to resolve that. I don't think that's a question for right now. That's all. I think it's a question to keep in mind, but there's just too much going on. And there's too much enthusiasm for the potential for upside action. I mean, look at the steel stocks. I, I, I showed my subscribers over the weekend. SL, uh -oh. SLX, this is the Van Eck Vectors Steel ETF. And it should be coming on my back and showed over here. Um, right there, where's my steel ETF? Just in case it doesn't come. Uh, let me find it over here. What is that? That's not it. Mm, that's not it. That's not it. Ay, ay, ay. IWM. The other one. Gosh, it's taking a long time to get those charts back up. All right. Which one is this? Why doesn't it tell me? Hmm. That's a big deal now. All right. I'm sorry. I thought I had it all ready, and it's just taking too long. Nothing I can do about it other than to say that the SLX, which is the um, steel, Vanek steel ETF, was doing really well, and... Let me look and see. Yeah, they're still flashing away those little lights. Yeah, there's a problem with Comcast. So all I can say is can't get it right now. Um, I can do this and see if I can speed it up. And I, I, let, me, let me, if you don't mind, I'm going to do this right here. And I'm going to see, is this the chart? Which one is this? This is the Dow. These are what I sent out over the weekend. This is my Dow for three time frames. There we go again. What is it? IWM, DOD, that's what we've got. We took a very 90% profit in that. We still have half left over. Um, <clears throat> oh, this is terrible, isn't it? Uh, waiting, waiting, waiting. What did I say this was? Oh, and there's, a, there's, a, there's the music. So I, I, I don't see it. I'm sorry. It should have been there, but it's not. I'm trying to find it. Good. Saved by the bell, as we used to say in school. And uh, we're waiting for the attributes. SLX, oh, we've got Scott and Safety Harbor. Scott, I'm going to ask you what the question is, and I'll try to get it during the break. Scott, what's the question? Uh, I want to talk a little about NVIDIA. You made a great call on okay. NVIDIA. Then we're going to go to CX. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back, and the Dow is down up 130. SB is up 10 and a half, and we are on with Scott in Safety Harbor. Scott, let's go. So that was a great call you made on NVIDIA. It did go back. I got stopped out at uh, 112.25, so I am now looking for a position in X or CX. I didn't even have time to get into X, but I'm, I'm looking at CX because it hasn't really had much of a move uh, along with everything else. So I guess that okay. we can look at that. So but you did a great well, job on NVIDIA. Thank you very much. So one of the things I was looking at, folks, in NVIDIA, let me just do this quick, briefly. It's down forward 109.68. The work that I do had a left side, right side price time match in a cup formation, and it was going to a D, and it got the D with a doji candle right on the 7th, and uh, that's when the earnings came out that evening, I believe. Uh, no, 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 the earnings came out two days later. But what I was looking at was the MACD and Stochastic were really much, much weaker. They weren't confirming the strength. That's number one. Number two, the SMHs, which this is part of, and it's actually been a big part of, the Semiconductor Index was giving me short-term sell signals. So my thinking was that, and also in my month, in the weekly chart, if there was a new high above 119.93 made from December in the weekly chart, that would go to, I was going to call it a leg F rather than an F slash B, and I even put the F in. And the only reason is that I mentioned during my show during that week that the RSI was starting to fail. That's that red line over there. And the stochastic MACD were not confirming the higher high, if it, if it did make a higher high. So I didn't have a trade in it. So, you know, theoretically, anybody can be right. It's what you do with a trade that really counts. So thank you very much. But I am a little concerned in, in, in NVIDIA because I think that the week, the monthly chart has gone to a leg E, and I still think it's a, it's a fantastic company. But the way, it's, the way it continued higher seemed to me that it was it was riding optimism and it wasn't really i was not seeing the same validity in the technical so now we'll see what happens 107 to 104 will be key support next support so cx which is something that scott often trade oh no i gotta wait now to get cx have you got a price in cx right now I'm at about. Uh, I'm not in it right now, so right. 925. But, it's at 925. So I'm looking for a, a little bit of a pullback, but I, I'm not. That's why I'm calling you. I, I really don't see it any signs of a pullback right now. Okay. So here it is. So what we had spoken about before, there was a peak D, and I said, if there's going to be cement that's needed. This is the company that provides it, uh, U.S., Mexican, doesn't matter where it is. This is the company. Uh, they provide a huge, a huge amount. My only concern was <clears throat> that the week, the monthly chart had made a leg D. 
The Mank D was good, and the stochastic was at 83%, but the power between the peak B, which had a high in the month of, seven, of 909, and then the struggle to get for, for three months later just up to 935, then pull back very sharply, and then struggle to get to the high of 951, says <clears throat> maybe it's just consolidating. If you remember, I drew the rectangle in in the month in the weekly chart from the peak F top back in the week of November the 11th at 935, and the low that was made at $7.19. Well, I agree and with it's, you talking it's, about the struggle, and I think today it moved up just because the tide moved up, and sometimes everything kind of moves up a little with the tide. The, mar the market tide, right. Yeah, so I don't think I, the VX itself really moved up. If but what I am sense. going to say to you is that I was really surprised that you had switched from watching U.S. Steel to uh, X symbol up to 50 today at $40.10. Yeah, you know what, cents. Basil? I mean, I, I, I was so in tune with, with U.S. Steel. I just kicked myself because I, I got on this NVIDIA thing, and I don't no, I haven't, you know, I, how I do it. I, I use the analogy of sitting with a patient, with all the monitors on the patient, holding the patient's pulse, and that's what I did with an X, and that's what I've and done with a lot of them. Full I know, that's right. I did then you not give it do full that focus. with NVIDIA. I, right. I got into something that others influenced me. Let's say that. It's not that okay. it's, not, it's my fault, so, but, you know, I so took the head on I'm going so. to say, let me just say to you, for give NVIDIA, another, you know, I, I actually said give NVIDIA another two, three days. I still say it needs another third day. As a bounce stock, this is something you might want to play, but only well, as a bounce. Here's going to be my rule, Basil, that any, and this has been my rule in the past. If I'm playing with $100, more than $100 stock, it's going to be one of two for the next year, and that's going to be Facebook or Apple, because those you don't have to worry about. But right. things like NVIDIA, I mean, think think about this. When you've got billions and billions and billions of dollars coming in to Apple, and they really don't have to, to make anything. For the most part, it's all, all uh, uh, software and so forth. And it's, renew and it's renewals, yeah. And it's right. renewals, right? So mm -hmm. why would you buy another stock for $100? You remember back when I used to, to trade Gilead, and I was always very Correct. nervous about it. And, and sure enough, then Gilead pulled back... And, and it goes back to what you said last week. When you've got something that's got free advertising in play, do you know that you can turn on the TV anytime and somewhere in that newscast they mention Apple? <laughs> You're a mean, good point. It's, it's that's, or Facebook. So, it's let, ridiculous. Let, let me make this real short and sweet. I'm going to say to you, Scott, you changed your modus operandi. That's not a problem. Because before what you've done is you've wanted to change it. And you had said to me, you're right here on the show, that you were thinking of buying it more as a longer term. And we had discussed that you would start a position, and that's the one you wouldn't touch, and then you would trade. Keep your eye on U.S. Steel, even though I think that this is the week that it makes some kind of a top, and then it has another pullback. But right now, it's looking very strong. Keep your eye on the price, because that's what you taught us, and I'm just going to throw it right back at you. And I will well, tell everybody, the, and, and, I, I could have lost, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars. But you got to put those stops in. That way, you can minimize it to a couple thousand. Absolute. You have to put in stops, people. Correct. You so hey, go, good luck go with the next one. Have a, a fantastic trading life if you will learn how to use those stops. If you don't, absolutely, you will lose. Okay. You'll, you'll have to restart. That's all. That's what happened. You so might here's the other a thing. a long time, maybe forever, to get back in the game. <laughs> I'm just going to say to you, Scott, before we go to the break, I want you not to forget about NVIDIA. See if you can look at it and just get a feel for it, but don't do anything. Because too nervous, too nervous, Basil. I'm going to stick with those $200 Stay with you. Okay. You know, all Facebook right. And, That's and it. Apple. Thank you. Thanks for calling. I'm going back to the Good. U.S. Steel and, and my That's old it. CX and, and uh, BAC and things that are a little more reasonable. That's it. Good. Okay, thanks for calling and letting us know. Thank okay, you. thank you. So, folks, now the Dow is up 127. The S&P is up 10.31. There's something going on here that I, I've been speaking about for two weeks. One of the reasons why I wanted for my subscribers for us to keep our – our Dow sector stock uh, ETF, no, no, uh, stocks ETF, is because I did not want to be out of things 
if there was an acceleration to the upside in this first quarter, I'll talk more about it in a moment, and there's only one reason for bringing it up. And the reason is that the MACD in the IWM, let me show you, let me pull, oh, yep, there it is. The IWM is going to be key, the MACD in the Dow is going to be key this week. So we'll watch it real close. I'll be back when we talk about it. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to Trade Options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or Swim. Next on TFNN. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman here. And final segment, of course, I'm waiting for my data. There it is. EM. I had a question about EM. This is A. Chapman Wave A. B. C. Up. I'm not doing this too quickly. D. And this could be either an A, B. C or G slash C. So MACD makes that arch formation and then it retests. It's what I call an M formation. Looks like a dolphin there. And the stochastics at 93%, very good. Now, I'm going to make this, uh, I'll make this as uh, uh, clear as I can. Within the Chapman Wave methodology, I look at volume through unbalanced volume. I've always respected people who look at volume and have wonderful trading tools and they use volume in a particular way. For some reason in my work, I just have never been able to fathom the consistency of using volume. Um, but I have used on balance. I always have used on balance way back since when I started using Joe Granville's methodology. But I loved when it became a chart 
when it's all numbers, just numbers, uh, too many numbers. But as a chart, I love it. I'm visual. And what I am looking at here is that in a number of the daily charts, and I'll just go quickly here to the 120-minute chart. You see what's happened? Chapman Wave 5 in the... Um, Chapman Wave 5 in the telephone. <laughs> Chapman Wave 5 um, in a G slash C. And in the 120 minute chart, the MACD is still very good. Stochastic is still very good. And all I can say is that it's extended. But I need evidence here that we're going to start to turn down. And that evidence is going to be, and what I'd say to subscribers is that we need about a we, we need a slide that takes out on a closing basis the nine period exponential moving average. It doesn't matter how high we go. And that's now at 20,276 uh, on the, uh, on, this is on the 120 minute chart. And it's at 20,149 on the daily chart. And all I can say is that on the daily chart, What's really important here, let me get rid of these numbers because they're really old. Um, on the daily chart, we've broken that resistance. Sorry if it's a little messy. Yeah, let me just do this so you know what we're looking at. We're looking at the daily chart right there. And what's important about this particular daily chart is that you see this gray cushion? I call it a cushion. Now I can go back to expanding it right there. This cushion is something that's going to be really important because at any point in, in, the, in February or March, if there is a close below 19,677, I want to give it a little room. A close between 19,000, uh, below 19,600, we're in a different ball game. Something else is going on, and that impacts the weekly chart. That's really what I wanted to say. So in the meantime, uh, one, two, three strong candles after the little doji candle. This is the third one. Usually after this third candle, it could close a little bit differently than where it is right now. I'm a little cautious, just in short term. I didn't really want to add too many things on the long side. And at the same time, on the short side, I think we just missed getting back into a short. We had a, a really nice uh, um, profit in. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Days young, we'll see. So um, that's what we're looking at. So EEM, this is the iShares Emerging Market ETF. It's gone above the nine period moving average in the daily, but the 200 period moving average in the weekly says that there should be chop, chop, chop around here. So 3828 right now. I would say the 39s is resistance and the 37s is support. And that's the answer to the question. Where is it? Uh, another question just came up. Would you take a short on the SPY at 23.25 on the E-mini, 2325 on the S&P? Uh, let me just say, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait. But if you, if you, are, if you promise that you make it a really tight three and a half to four point stop, I'd say, you know what? Right here, this is about your best chance on the daily to get some kind of a pullback into tomorrow. But uh, it's got to have a very tight stop. Hey, folks, I'll be back tomorrow. Check out my opening call. I think you'll find the performance of hopefully pro Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.